What's up guys? It has been a minute and a half since I made a video of me talking about the things. Excited to be back, you know, live to the heat wave of 2020 here. And let me just tell you something that Western European heat hits different. So now that we're past all of that, hopefully, we're gonna talk about pre-match preparation or what's called priming more specifically. We're not gonna get all sciencey as we don't usually on this channel. So let's start with the main question of what the hell is priming? Priming is something that you do within 24 hours of a competition. As a football player, you might do something specific, a specific kind of training called priming the day before in order to wake your body up. It's an activation technique, essentially. It's like if your car has been sitting in the garage for three weeks, before you go drive that sucker the first time, you're probably gonna like turn it on just to make sure it works. Like just to make sure the motor is like Right. We're not like slamming the gas pedal. We're not sending the car through the wall. We're not going for a joy ride. We're just making sure that the engine still works. We're just waking up the body, waking up the musculature, waking up the nervous system, and that's it. We're just going in, getting it done, and getting out. So priming is usually a really short session and it involves lots of rest. Before we even get to the priming session, how do you prepare for a competition? First, important, sleep. You should have slept well, and if you haven't slept well, then you might need to take in some caffeine. Regeneration is super important that the athlete feels recovered, and again, that fuel, nutrition. So now that the preparation is out of the way, let's get to the actual training session of the priming. And let's remember, it's not a typical training session. The point in this session is not to get better. The thing that we're trying to achieve, the actual purpose of the session, is to prepare for the competition tomorrow. So it shouldn't be exhausting. Fatigue should never be a condition of a priming session ever. The first thing we do in a priming session is mobility and activation. Psychologically, as well as physiologically, we're just trying to wake everything up, get things moving, dynamic stretching, moving around, doing any sprint technical work that you might do, um, getting in positions that you're gonna be using. And then we move right along into the strength portion. Research has actually told us that you can do strength sessions literally before or after competitions and not necessarily take away from the competition. So in this case, we're gonna talk about using maximal effort, high intensity strength work. And we'll talk about the power element when we get to PAP later on, but doing a high intensity strength training session uh, for the lower body and then maybe adding a little bit of volume to the upper body just because you can without taking a, a high neurological toll, right? So we can still get some things accomplished. We're still getting the body warmed up. We're still getting moving. We're accomplishing something, but we're not focused on getting better. We're just focused on waking up the body. Again, fatigue should never be an issue. We need to rest significantly. Rest times will generally be longer in a priming session than they normally would be. And next is power. So my typical priming session is activation, mobility, and then we're having a strength component. Depending, we might have strength and power. Again, we'll talk about that when we get to PAP. But, and then power, it's usually 10 to 15 jumps, maximum three to six sprints, depending on the athlete in the sport, and then that's it, we're out. Again, it's a quick session, we're not hanging around, we're not doing nothing. The last step to priming, especially if you're doing it on the day of, is to make sure that the athlete stays warm, right? We're not trying to prime the entire time up until when they compete. You're using priming the day before or the morning of your competition, depending. Recovering between the priming session and the competition, your warm up should be very thorough, but also not exhausting before you go to compete. So make sure that everything is warm, make sure that you're recovered. Additionally, the psychological stand is really, really important. Like your status in your mind is vitally important in those last 24 hours before competition. And honestly, that might be more important than the physiological aspects that we're talking about now. But if you need to watch a motivational video, if you need to get hyped up, if you need to use music, if you need to relax, if you need to recover, those things, it's important for you to know that, for the athlete to know that and take charge of that to make sure that your level of physiological and psychological, they work together, arousal is set that's why it's important to recover between the priming session and the competition, because if you just stay hyped up that whole time, you're going to have a serious problem because you didn't recover from that session. And now your arousal level has just steadily peaked across time. By the time you get to competition, <laughs> it's also important to know if you need to get more hyped up, like if you're too relaxed between the priming session and that, then build some of those priming aspects into your warm up again. Fatigue should never be a component. So let's talk about PAP. Okay, so we're not gonna talk about like the force velocity relationship or acute excitation or pinnate angles or things like that. We're just talking about the very basics of PAP. First of all, it goes without saying that PAP is highly individual, and this is really for intermediate to advanced athletes, not necessarily for beginners. You do a very high intensity, for example, a three rep max of 90% back squat, and then you go to do your counter, 
go to do your counter movement jump and that should improve your counter movement jump performance or your vertical jump performance. The PAP performance benefits are actually short lived in an acute sense, but over time, if you're doing PAP over the long haul could actually improve your performance over the long haul. And that, for example, works better than doing a low intensity but high velocity. So for example, a 10 rep max at 50% back squat and then doing that same sprint, you won't necessarily get the same effect, especially as an intermediate to an advanced athlete. You're not getting that neurological drive, essentially the push that PAP is. So we're going high intensity, probably low velocity because you can't really move high intensity to high velocity unless you're freaking crazy in which case and then we are max capacity sprinting jumping throwing whatever you want to use so strength something that probably mimics what you're going to do so i tend to use back squat or a hex bar deadlift and then something a soccer player is probably going to sprint and jump not too much variety you don't over want to overload the athlete or yourself whoever you are watching this video Fatigue management is a thing. We're just going in the garage, sticking in the key, revving up the engine and making sure the car works, that everything is in order, everything's awake. And then again, we're taking those sleep, regeneration, nutrition, caffeination, warming up, body temperature and psychological motivational things with us afterwards. Don't put too much into the priming session. It is important. It is a great tool. You don't have to use PAP necessarily, again, especially if you're a beginning athlete, but it is something cool to play around with. Maybe next time I'll have an intro. I feel like the more I say that, the more that there's absolutely no chance that I'm going to have an intro. But if you have something that you really want me to discuss, write me a message, leave it in the comments, whatever, and uh, I will do my best to give my very scientific professional opinion on it. Hope you survive the heat wave and we'll see you later.